Patrick and Carol Hemingway lived nearby me for years. Hello, Patrick. Hi, it's hi. Donna. How are you? Hi. Great to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? Great, great. Yes, that Hemingway family. Truthfully, I tried to get an interview with him for years. I'd watch him walking laps with his black lab dog around their circular driveway, and I'd put a bug in Carol's ear about it when we would see each other getting mail or tending flowers. Patrick was in East Africa for 25 years, then moved to Montana in 1975 from childhood memories coming out to a dude ranch close to Cook City. He remarried after his wife died, and he and Carol have been together for 42 years. Now they live in a retirement community in Bozeman. An opportunity to visit with him, he wrote a book. Letters he wrote back and forth with his father, Ernest Hemingway. I understood pretty early on what my dad was trying to do. A letter was to be written on the 1st and 15th of every month by Patrick Hemingway to his father, Ernest, and not just, hi, how are you, I'm fine. Create a real relationship between his children and himself, which, as I point out in the development of, of my book, this was hard to do. It was hard to choose which letters to include in his book, Dear Papa, but Patrick and two of his grandsons helped by reading them out loud and finding the ones with the most interest, showing the relationships between father and son and multiple families. Ernest Hemingway was married four times. Yes, and I made a point of testing everything that he had done for myself to see whether I liked it. And it turned out that Really, most of the things that he liked, I liked too. And this was especially true of reading and literature. That was the advantage I had over my two brothers. Not advantage, but the difference between myself and my two brothers. I was really interested in reading and literature. The relationship was an extraordinarily close one. Loving. We loved each other. And it seems like you liked each other in addition to loving each other. Yes. Well, we, we, we were on each other's wavelength. We had similar tastes. He, of course, was much more talented. With so many books, at least 16, that garnered a Nobel and a Pulitzer Prize, and many made into movies, Patrick does have a favorite. Well, I think, I think A Farewell to Arms is my favorite. It's his most conventional book. And it is, I think, a really great novel, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was reading that A Farewell to Arms has 47 alternate endings? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you see some of those endings? And, and no, would you I've, have put I've, any never, go, I've yeah. never gone over the 47 <laughs> alternate endings. One of Patrick's siblings said it was hard to be in the shadow of Ernest Hemingway, in the shadow of his fame. No. No, it wasn't hard for me. I, I enjoyed being his son. And it, it didn't bother me because I don't think I was terribly ambitious. I never, never was. I never wanted to win the Nobel Prize, for instance, which my brother Gregory really did. <laughs> Patrick would be one of the first to come to his father's aid when he died at 61. What a tortured end he had to endure. You know, I bring this up in the book. When he died, it, Mary was very upset, of course, and she tried initially to pass his death off as, as an accident, as a, you know, that he was cleaning his gun and it went off. Well, this, this was impossible to do. And it was soon very apparent that he was a suicide, you know, that he'd killed himself. Ernest Hemingway was in two plane crashes in two days, suffered a severe head injury, and was in pain the rest of his life. And alcohol was a problem. A lot of accounts would say that he was a fairly heavy drinker. Oh, was he not? No, he belonged to that great English tradition, you know, that you could drink everybody under the table. You were the last man alive, you know. <laughs> Alcohol certainly played a role, but I think under the prop, under proper treatment, he would have had a, a nice old age.
although there's no really such a thing as a nice old age, but <laughs> a bearable old age. <laughs> That's the one looking out from the Finca. And what, it, oh, is that in Cuba? That's Cuba. Cuba yeah. That's Cuba, okay. And is this the one now that, uh, that, that you rescued all the treasures from and the manuscripts? And yes, yes, yes. It was a solid battle to get back his dad's estate. I mean, we were more or less disinherited. I don't know that he had that intention, but certainly all the people around him had that intention. And so we were finally out in the cold. So we had to ins institute a, a lawsuit that took a long time and cost half a million dollars to get back in control of his estate. And part of getting it back meant his stepmother Mary dealing with the leader of Cuba. There was a boat that was leaving for Tampa from Havana, and she managed to get by getting the goodwill of, of uh, Fidel Castro. He allowed her to take everything she wanted. In return, she turned over the Hemingway house there to the Cuban people. Mm -hmm. And what All was there? Manuscripts, paintings, the lot, anything of value that she could transport. He certainly had a big father and is thankful for his mother as well. If anything, I loved my mother more than I did my father, which is the usual case with a son. But I don't ever talk about her much. But that doesn't mean I didn't love her. Patrick was 23 years old when his mother, Pauline Pfeiffer, died. She's mentioned in some of the letters, in one, passing along thanks to Ernest for the rum and checking the tiles. Patrick would make the best of getting along with the two women that Ernest married after her death. But a man and his dog, that's a bond with unconditional love that is hard to match. Patrick, I miss seeing you walk with the black dog around your oh, circular yes. driveway. Yes, that was a really nice dog. We had th three labs and uh, you know the main thing about dogs is they don't live long enough. Agreed, but he still has his father's work that lives on next to forever. In Bozeman, Donna Kelly, MTN News.